What if I told you that your team is leaking sensitive information in Jira every single day without even knowing it? In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly why most Jira permissions don't go far enough, how we lock down confidential work items or issues without needing to split up separate projects, and the fully automated process that we use to hide work items from everyone except the people who need to see them. Hey there, I'm Josh, founder of Grid.io, and we've helped thousands of teams optimize Jira and reclaim their time. What I'm about to show you will guide you through exactly how to secure your Jira work items and only make them visible to specific users or groups. And at the end, I'll show you the exact automation that we use to lock critical issues in real time with no manual steps. Let's jump in. Now, why are project level permissions sometimes just not enough? So let's take a look at my IT support project and use it as an example. So in here, I have a lot of my open tickets, but I also have a couple of different regions, two of which are America and APAC. Uh, now, what I may wanna do is isolate and lock down specific issues in each of these regions to those specific teams. So there may be some particular information that might be sensitive to the America region, same thing with the APAC region, uh, and I don't want a team that's working in the America region to see anything that's going on in APAC and vice versa. So instead of creating a whole new project, a whole new portal, and dividing these teams, separating them entirely, creating new uh, issue types, uh, request types, and going down that rabbit hole, what we could do is just apply issue security. The other really common use case for this is offboarding. Probably the most common way that I personally see this used is with offboarding tickets, specifically with IT teams. So when you have these tickets coming in as offboarding, you don't necessarily want every single agent in the environment to see them. So what you do is apply an issue security so that only admins, specific agents, and those that are dealing with these offboardings can actually see them as they come in. So let's take a look at my example in my IT project. So we have these couple of regions with America and APAC, and let's say that I'm in the America region and I should be working on the America tickets, but the APAC team is gonna be someone else and I shouldn't have access to these whatsoever. As of right now, I could see these in the queue, I could jump in them, interact with them, uh, go through, change the statuses, assign them to myself, and pretty much do anything else that I'd like. So let's run through exactly how we'd apply issue security to lock this down. Now, the first step is to create a scheme. To do that, we'll go to the settings on the top right. We'll go to issues, and you may hear me say issues and work items interchangeably. This is just because we're in a little bit of an awkward stage where half of the Jira environments are using the terminology of issues, and the other half are work items, but most most likely by the time you watch this, it's gonna be all work items. So I'll select on issues, scroll down and select issue security schemes. And again, this may say work item security schemes. Now I have a few available for me in my demo environment, but in your case, this will probably be blank. So we'll go ahead and add a new security scheme. We'll give this a name. So I'll call this APAC security. And I'll drop a quick description to make sure that everyone else knows exactly what this does. And I'll click on add. So now our scheme is created, what we do is go to the security levels. That's the next step down, and we'll create our first security level. Once again, we'll give this a quick name. Once that level is created, we need to add permissions to it. We can do that by clicking the add button on the right side, and that will take you to this screen. So there are a lot of ways that we could provide permissions to something that is locked down. But the couple of ways that I like to use this are groups and single users. Uh, in some cases, I may use a project role, but I do caution you against using this and creating different project roles specifically for uh, this security level. And the reason being is that if I do create a new project role that might be APAC agents, uh, that's gonna show up on every single project, including marketing, uh, infrastructure, which may not have anything to do with the APAC team. So it doesn't really make sense to create new project roles for issue security, uh, but it does make sense to use existing ones if they apply. So in a case like this, I might add administrators just by default, just to make sure that anyone who's an admin of the project can immediately access it. So I'll click on add. So, and what we could do now is add more permissions and layer on top of it. So I'll add another one. And in this case, I'll use a group. And I'll use the AWS group just as an example. So I'm grabbing the AWS support group. Whoever's added in there will be able to automatically see the issues where the security level is applied. So now we have our two different permissions defined specifically for APAC lock. So now everything's ready on the system level. Let's go ahead and apply this to our project next. Back in my IT support project, I'll click the three dots next to the project icon and name and then I'll go to project settings. In here, there's a tab for access. So what we're gonna wanna do is go down to issue security. And as you can see, there is nothing applied as of right now, which is why we created our security scheme, which we can now apply to an existing project. So I'll click on actions on the top right, select a scheme, and make sure that I grab the one that I just created. And that one's gonna be APAC security. I'd probably name this something more along the lines of IT support security scheme, 
That way we could apply it and then the different security levels could be for each different region. Uh, but in this case, this will work just fine since I only need to lock down one region. And I'll click associate. Once that's done, I will hit acknowledge. Now back in our issue security, we have our security level applied with our users and groups that have permissions to APAC lock. Uh, shown on the right side, just as they did in the system settings. So now how do we apply this to different work items in our Jira environment? So going back to our work item, we should have a lock icon on the top right. And this is what trips up a lot of different agents in Jira when they're setting this up. So in order for that lock item to show, we need to apply a field to the screen called security level. And the way we do that is by going back into our project settings and keep note of what issue type this is. So I'll go into my project settings, go into my screens, and the issue type that I was looking at was a service request with approval. So this is the one I need. And I don't need this on the create screen. I pretty much just need it on the edit and view, which in this case, they are the same. I'll go ahead and open this up. I'm gonna scroll down and I'm gonna find the search field and search for security level. And I'll go ahead, I'll select that and make sure that it's added to my screen. So now our issue type has the security level field. Let's go back and see if we have our lock icon. So now the lock item is showing up and keep in mind, you will need to do this for any screens that you have available within this project. So I could click on the lock icon and set a security level, which in this case would be APAC lock. So I'll click on that and our issue security has been set. And you could visually see that it's set by seeing that this lock icon is red. And when you click on it, there's a little check mark that says which security level is applied. And you could also remove the security level if you don't want it applied anymore. One more thing to keep in mind is that only specific users have permissions to actually set this issue security. So if you go to your project settings once again, we could go to the project permissions. And in here, there's gonna be an item listed for set issue security. You can see which roles or groups have access to this. So in my case, I have admins and a couple of other project roles. So something to keep in mind, if you want specific individuals to be able to set the issue security level, you'll need to make sure that they have this permission assigned. Let's go ahead and test our security level out to see if it'll apply when I remove myself from the AWS group. So I'll go into my groups in Atlassian and remove myself from AWS. And we'll go back to the issue. And you can see that this does have that issue security applied and I'll refresh. And now when I refresh, I see this screen, which means that I don't have access to the issue until I add myself back to the group. I'll go ahead and drop myself in one more time. And now if I go back and refresh, I once again get access to this work item. Let's take a quick peek at what this looks like on a queue level. So I could see both APAC items and I'll remove myself from the group one more time. Now looking back at my APAC queue, I could see that the one work item disappeared, which had the issue security related to it. So what options do we have to actually set the security on these different work items? So option one is manual and we just covered that. You click on the lock icon, you apply the issue security level and you're good to go. Option two is to use a post function and I'll show you exactly how to do that. So back in our project settings, I'll go to my workflows. I'll find the workflow that I want this to apply to. In this case, it's the service request with approval. I'll go ahead and edit that workflow. Make sure that you're on the diagram view because it's a lot easier to use. And then let's say I want this to apply on issue creation. So I'll click on that transition for create issue. I'll go to post functions and I'll add a new post function. And in here, there's a specific line item for set issue security level based on the user's project role. So let's click on that and click on add. And then there's a couple of fields to fill out here. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that you do need to select a project role, which in this case, it won't really matter since we're just applying an issue security level to a work item. And what we're gonna do is select the service desk customers since they're the ones submitting requests on the portal or via email and that's coming in. Uh, and that's the minimum project role that we'll need to set the issue security level, which in this case will be the APAC lock. So I'll click on add and we now have our issue security level automatically set on issue creation. Now post functions, that was option two. I tend to use option three a little bit more often, which is automations. So let's go into our automation tab and go over exactly how to set this up. So let's go ahead and create a new rule from scratch and the trigger is gonna be issue created. And what I'm gonna do is add a condition to only apply to specific issue types. So I'm gonna select issue type equals service requests with approval. And then we're gonna add an action to edit an issue and set the security level. And in the dropdown, I'll select APAC lock. We could turn the rule on and give it a quick name. And this essentially does the same thing that our post function did. The reason I like to use automations is because we have more flexibility. So I could start adding different transitions, more conditions that are layered on top of this, maybe even with specific field values. In the example of offboarding, if there's some kind of sensitive information in the ticket or a field is not empty, that's the condition I might use to apply a security level. So this setup gives you better control over issue security, but it's still mostly manual with the exception of the one automation that we just built. Now the real magic happens when you combine this with more advanced automation rules and lock down work items instantly, either on creation, transition, or other actions within that work item. And I'll show you exactly how to do that in this next video.